Welcome to my channel. One of the requests that I got, which struck me as rather odd at first, and then when I thought about it, I realized what was going on, was to react to a documentary about a manhunt of global terrorists in the Philippines. And I thought, what on earth? This isn't music. And then I realized, okay, they realize that I'm a vet, and so they think I might have something useful to say about it. And in fact, the person who requested it wrote in the comments, as a veteran of war, what are the things that they could have done better to get the terrorists without make, uh, many casualties? And I'm going to be frank with you. I've been sitting on this for a couple of days because I wasn't sure I even wanted to do it. But then I decided, okay... I'll go ahead and respond to this because it's been requested and they want to know what my opinion is and I have an opinion about everything so I might as well talk about this too. Uh, but before we get started I have to tell you first of all I am a veteran I served six years in the United States Navy but I am not a combat veteran I've never seen combat I've never had any commando training I've never been trained in in house to house warfare or any kind of warfare except for naval warfare. And so I'm uniquely unqualified to comment on a commando raid in the Philippines. But after watching the video, I do have some thoughts and I want to express them. So I'm going to do that now. But before I do that, I want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for making all the requests that you make. Thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for coming back over and over and over again. And thank you for the wonderful comments that you make. Now, what my intention is, is I'm going to show you this video, just about a minute of it, just the very beginning. And then I'm going to talk about it. So the name of the video is Plan Exodus, the SAF 44 documentary. So here we go. <clears throat> 10 p.m. Night of January 24, 2015. Oops. About 390 SAF commandos are on their way to an unfamiliar territory to carry out a classified mission, a mission which the SAF are the most capable of. The Special Action Force, or SAF, is an elite unit of the Philippine National Police. The members were chosen among a number of participants who had undergone a tough selection procedure. The qualified members then received special and intense training to handle operations such as raids, hostage rescue, and counter-terrorism. Their involvement to end coup d'etat attempts in the late 1980s and the Zamboanga siege in 2013 are just some of the many accomplishments of the Special Action Force. Months before this mission, an intelligence report allegedly from the United States revealed that two of the most wanted terrorists in several countries are currently hiding in the marshlands of Mamasapano, Maguindanao, Philippines. The objective of the SAF is to infiltrate and capture terrorists Abdul Basit Usman and the main target, one of FBI's most wanted terrorists, Zulkifli bin Hir, alias Marwan. Marwan is a Malaysian terrorist who specializes in bomb making. Together with his group, Marwan was involved in a number of attacks and plots in Southeast Asia, including a reported plot targeting the Pope during his visit in the Philippines. Fortunately, it was averted. This mission, however, was not new to the SAF. Efforts to capture Marwan can be dated back to 2010, wherein nine consecutive attempts have been made, but none were successful. Most missions were aborted and in some cases, Marwan was able to escape. But this time... Okay, so you get the flavor of it. 
<coughs> excuse me, <coughs> um, now that you've gotten the flavor of it, you can watch the rest of that yourself. It's, it's an hour long. But I'm going to give you kind of a summary of what took place. They sent about 380 commandos into this, uh, what could only be described as hostile territory, to try and capture or kill two terrorists. And in that area, there were two different, two rival uh, mil militant groups of uh, Muslims. One was called the MILF and the other was called the BIFF. I don't recall off the top of my head what those stand for, but they'll explain that in the video if you watch it. But basically, uh, these two militant groups were in that area where the terrorist was hiding, were hiding. There were two of them. And so, um, when, when the raid was in the planning stages, the uh, country of the Philippines was in peace talks with the MILF. So they sent these 380 commandos in and a group of uh, 36 from the 55th SA SAC uh, were sent in directly into where the the uh, the, mil the the terrorists were located to capture or kill them, and then there was a support unit called the Seaborne Commandos that were nearby to support them, and then the rest of the 380 were a backup basically, and they went in and they located the terrorists and they killed one. The other one escaped, but the gunfire that erupted when they killed the, the terrorist, they killed Marwan, alerted the militants in the area and they came running. And essentially what happened was the MILF surrounded the SAC commandos, the 36 commandos uh, on three sides and the BIFF was on the fourth side. So they were completely surrounded and ended up 35 of the 36 commandos died. And then of the Seaborne commandos who rushed in to try and support them, nine of their 41 were killed. And so there was a big investigation and people were upset about all the deaths and all this kind of stuff. And so I, I think the reason why this person requested that I review this or that I react to it is because they thought I might have some knowledge of the tactics that were used and what they could have done better. And I don't. I don't have any training at all in that area. But there are some things that I would comment on just from an observer standpoint of having watched the video and thought about what took place. The first thing that I would note was that the decision was made by someone in the Philippine military not to inform the MILF that they were coming in. And that, in my opinion, was a big mistake because the MILF didn't know what was going on and when the, when the gunfire broke out, they assumed they were under attack and so they responded, as you would expect them to do. And because they had the commandos surrounded, they killed almost every single one of them. There was only one man in the whole group that survived. So I think it was a huge mistake not to let the MILF know that they were coming in. But, <coughs> excuse me, more than that, um, if I had been involved in the planning of this operation, I would have suggested to them, why are we sending in 380 commandos to take out two guys? Let's send in, send in a two-man sniper team and maybe two men for backup. First of all, whenever you have a large group of military moving, they draw attention. 380 commandos are going to make noise. They're, they're not going to be able to hide the fact that they're there. 
And secondly, using stealth and the training that, that the people have who are uh, snipers, you have a sniper and a spotter, a two-man team, they can get a lot closer to the intended targets than anybody else could. Uh, <clears throat> if you've ever, if you're familiar with Carlos Hathcock's story about when he was in Vietnam, uh, <clears throat> he managed to kill a North Vietnamese commander by himself without without even a spotter from 800 yards away, and then had to play possum in a agricultural field, a rice field, for almost 48 hours before he was able to retreat and get out of there. But he did it. He was successful. That's what snipers are trained to do. So my suggestion would have been, number one, let's send in a two-man team or a two-man sniper and spotter team and then a second two-man team to support them. And my other suggestion would have been, why don't we ask the MILF to do this? We're in peace talks with the MILF right now. Let's tell them, look, we have we have good information, intelligence, that these terrorists are located in your area. As a good faith measure for us to prove that you really do want peace, we want you to go in there and capture these guys and bring them to us. And if you can do that, it will go a long way towards our completing this peace treaty. Why involve Philippine police at all when you can use the the existing elements that are already in the area, that are already familiar with the area, and already know their way around, and have sufficient force to take care of the problem. Because <clears throat> they had something like twelve or 1,300 men. And then let them figure it out. And if they lose some men, oh, so, so, so you know, okay, whatever. They lost some men, but they got the job done. But they didn't do that. They, they sent this massive team of 380 men into an area that they're unfamiliar with. And then they, they didn't notify the MILF that they were coming. And so the MILF thought they were under attack. I just think that was a huge mistake. And it cost a lot of lives. It cost a lot of lives. I don't remember exactly now from the video, but I think the MIL left lost nine or ten people. So the kill ratio was way out of balance, which tells you what a bad position. I mean, commandos are trained. You know what I'm saying? They are trained to deal with these types of situations. And for all but one of a 36-man team to be killed, they had to be in an awful situation where there was just no escape. And that's what they were. They were surrounded. They were completely surrounded. So those are my thoughts. They're not the thoughts of a professional. They're not the thoughts of someone who was trained in this area. But you asked me what I thought, and so this is what I thought. And I hope that satisfies your request, and I hope that you're satisfied with my answer. I don't know if it'll do any good. I don't think... The Philippines, in retrospect, would change what they did. I think they would probably do the same thing. I mean, you saw that they planned this operation like nine times before and carried it out five times unsuccessfully. So that alone would have told me, hey, this isn't working. Let's try something else. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not a military commander. I don't make those kinds of decisions. So anyway... That's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think in the comments if you're interested in discussing it further. In the meantime, I will pray for you. I will pray that you live an abundant life and that you're healthy and that you live a long time and that God keeps you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your request known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And I know you want to see what this says, so I'll pull it up.
there. <laughs> this is the Vietnam era vet out.